Hello and welcome to our today's after church tea time. We speak about the sermon from Lorenzo and Alexandra, gentleness, and how love can teach you on your healing journey when you create gentleness inside of you. And participating are Liana, Nikki, Deborah, and I. And I, I am very happy to be able to talk about this really wonderful sermon again from Lorenzo and Alexandra. I always enjoy their sermon very much. And I would like to open up the space for you to share your insights and what you really liked about the sermon. I can start. Hello again. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed today's sermon. It was very timely and very perfect and insightful. Uh, and it really like spoke to me in places of my consciousness that I wasn't aware that I was doing. I was like not being gentle like at all. And that I was using this ungentleness to tell myself, oh, why can't you like move forward in this upset while what I was missing was that I had to like my, my piece there was learning how to be gentle first and like how to cultivate cultivate that that space inside of me to actually be able to see deeper upsets and like feel safe in actually feeling through the upset and healing it um, completely and that's even like if you have awareness on some specific upsets or specific um, places in your consciousness, it doesn't mean that you are ready like to heal them without actually having another piece, like a bigger piece that will bring you that foundation to actually go there. And yeah, like this was my major piece that I took away. Yeah, for me, it was a good sermon too. Like it's a big theme in my journey as well, what I've been learning and it helped me to go deeper in being gentle with myself and also some places I was not aware of that I was kind of punishing or, yeah, it's really important. And yeah, in the beginning of my journey, I was very, well, the opposite, very not yet. And that was one of the first big blocks I moved to. So that's really important. And I love as well that is that when you're gentle with yourself, you're loving yourself, and then more obsessed come up and you can, then you can move forward. So, yeah. I really loved it too, uh, how they showed us how we can have this habit. I experienced it in my life. <laughs> and I, I, I had this big revelation when I had my coming out as a trans man because I realized, oh, I was all my life an asshole to myself because I never allowed myself in any way to be my true self. I forced myself mm -hmm. constantly to be someone who I never was in all areas of my life, in kind of in mm. everything I was. And I realized, oh, I'm really harsh to myself because I forced myself and I pushed myself constantly. And when I um, saw really that I am the, yeah, and I was able to, to relax in my true energy as a divine masculine, I felt so, ah, oh, this is how life can feel. It feels nice and I can just be and I can feel really good in how I am with people or how I can do the normal thing in life, uh, make, um, doing the household. I did it and how it felt good for me and not how I saw my mother doing it as a divine feminine or other divine feminines doing it. And so I realized, oh, and this is being nice to myself. Oh, this is being gentle to myself. And after this, I realized, oh, I need to learn that in all areas of my life. 
I'm not gentle here either. I'm not gentle how I work, how I, how I approach working, or I'm not gentle in my um, nurturing myself or having, or um, like playing. I just need to learn that in all aspects of my life. That's why I love how they guided us to see that with learning to be gentle to yourself, your life feels better. Also your healing journey feels better. Also like Ren will share, because when you learn to be gentle to yourself, also your whole life will feel better. That was very cool. I liked it very much about this ceremony. And it was a topic we were talking this week about because we, we saw in our union that we created in not being gentle to ourselves, a, a, a block in our union. We kind of watched ourselves creating a block and an upset in our union while because we were not gentle to ourselves. We mm. didn't listen to the good feeling in our yeah, heart. Yeah, we weren't honoring ourselves and that's something very harsh to do to yourself. Like you exactly. were sharing through your experience of kind of like pushing down the fact that you were a divine master in your whole life. Exactly. Um, and like I resonated with the topic. I, I pretty much have been doing the same thing like my entire life. And I liked something that helped me, that the sermon helped me realize was uh, that if I even like learned some of these uh, behaviors from, for instance, my mom. My mom would be someone who would snap at the slightest thing and she would immediately um, get into this being upset mode. And while I was hearing, uh, especially Alexandra talking about this at the very end of the, the sermon, I was like, Oh, so partially, like, this is also why I, I kind of like trip myself into being upset because I have upsets, because I believe that I have to feel upset about everything. When in truth, the, the truth is already there, there are things I don't really give a, a crap about anymore. It's like, I, they, they just really don't get me. And I don't like, I don't need to, um, my, my, like convince myself that I need to be upset about that like that's completely silly so that was very helpful um and kind of like releasing some uh, uh things that we kind of like grew up with or were taught because they also kind of like touch upon certain stuff might be anchoring uh childhood trauma or uh, past experiences and, and yeah we kind of like sometimes pick up things from the people we grew up with without even realizing we are doing it so it was very yeah. helpful to kind of like find that place and look. Like the shared that map mind alignment process mm. helps you to heal that because without map mind alignment process, process, I would have not been able to realize I have this habit of uh, being so harsh to myself all my life and not allowing myself at all mm. to be my true self. I wouldn't even have picked it up that I had childhood traumas, to be honest. Yes. So yeah the, it's very cool that they were pretty much kind of like um going like taking us deeper in this um acknowledging that the more love you invite that the more things not aligned with it it's they are just simply gonna come up but it's making room for what exactly what like what you truly desire which is more like gentleness softness uh, lightness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that I was also so reminded in this, uh, and I was sharing was how in this journey I've experienced the contrast of gentleness and compassion and learning with love, because before that I didn't know. It was mostly that punishment and or expectations, and yeah, yeah, this harshness. And yeah, my experience was, I remember I was, very confused at first, like, oh, uh, it shouldn't be, yeah, people are kind to me, or like, or I'm, yeah, I experienced this love and kindness, and and I tried, yeah, I believed so hard that I had to be harsh to myself, that it was not that, that kindness was the weird thing, but that's, it's the opposite, that you can just, yeah, it's just the core choice to learn through pain or love, and yeah, love is much faster and and learn to 
yeah, learn to uh, grow much better with this. It feels much nicer to just yeah be nice to yourself and loving and compassionate and uh, even when it's gentle and it seems slower or like it's not. It's just growing like yeah, like a flow. And, yeah, it feels really nice. It's just um, yeah, this it's a learning journey too if you're not used to that. So. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, I wanted to like bring up what was said about uh, being like aligned with the teaching, like, and how it's very important to to be aligned. Like, you can heal if you even like if you don't watch classes like regularly, for example. But it wouldn't be very compassionate and it can like take longer from my experience, it takes longer and it's very hard. Sometimes I don't see how um, I'm drifting away or I'm not very aware of my, my thoughts and my thought patterns and how it can actually trick me into not healing completely and being like fully healed there. So yeah, I really appreciated that this was mentioned as well, like in the sermon. Like to really be uh, aligned and close to the teaching and get back to the book and read like the mirror exercise and like be aware also when we do inner work, like what is this uh, thought pattern or thought that I'm having? Like, where is it drifting me? Like, you know, just like to be, to be like, um, yeah, grounded enough focused on the on the teaching and the principles of, of the teaching. Oh, I love that you mentioned the book because I actually <laughs> I had it at hand in flames finding your ultimate lover. There we go. And while I was listening to the sermon, especially again like at the end, I was feeling inclined in looking in the eight keys to harmonious to inflame union and one of them is compassion. And I found like self-acceptance and compassion for yourself and your twin flame will fill you up with love and grace because you are loving the part of you and them that is hurting or didn't know any better or wasn't ready to choose union in a place within where you had been choosing and experiencing separation from your good and your creator. Um, and I, yeah, uh, just choosing to have that gentleness, like that compassion that at some point, we all made a choice that we really didn't actually knew how it was gonna pan out. And now we are kind of like, like like Alex uh, was saying, like, oh, I made a woo-woo. Yeah, okay, I, now I, like, I can pick it up and actually do something about it. Uh, and, oh, yeah, how well, like, this is now yeah. easy for hair and light, okay. Yeah, because, uh, and this also ties in with something else that they were mentioning is uh, that Jeff and Shalia have, of course, uh, spoken to in, in Twin Flame Ascension School many times, which is if you had to choose between fear and love to be your teacher, like, who would you choose and how would that teaching look like? And fear would kind of like, um, just like and it would make you feel terrible about making a mistake. Uh, and absolutely like not compassionate at all, while love is, kind of like how God sees you and when you're with a child, you, you don't yell at them because they, I don't know, they fell off after doing their first trying to stand up. It's like, okay, just grab onto something, try it again. No, you're like very gentle. And it's kind of like recognizing that that's how uh, God loves us in truth. I realize sometimes my inner child, um, crying inside mm -hmm. of me and screaming because I don't treat my inner child nice and oh. gentle and I have to give myself a lot of compassion that I just let go of suppressing my true feelings my good feeling maybe it's just mm. going and playing something even I am adult 
adult right now. I just need to do that because oh. I need that right now because that is where my heart is guiding me. When I'm not doing that, it feels awful. I, I'm adult. I need always to work. And be I, serious. No, I cannot play. How dare you? <laughs> Yeah, well, in truth, we are all children disguised as adults. Like, that's why we are called children then, of God. So I'm sitting there, don't feeling good, uh, looking at Deborah and like, don't liking her, and then realize, oh, okay, yeah. it's something inside of me, and I need just to listen to myself. Mm. And this is not being nice to myself. And then I need two, two days or three days of others that was okay, I just mm -hmm. turn on the PlayStation. And it's enough when I play 20 minutes because that's enough for me. I just mm. needed that, that I can come further in the game I play. It's the next level. Okay, I feel good now. Mm. And that's good. That's nice to myself. I'm gentle here with myself. Okay. Mm. And I realized too, Dante, our son, has this voice too. Sometimes he's sitting with us and he, we see and we feel how he's talking to himself. And we make him aware of this voice and we help him to realize that the voice, which is not nice to him and that he can say no to this voice and let go of it. Mm. We really speak it out and explain him in his words that this is not his true self. This is not him. This is something he can say yeah. no to mm -hmm. and that he can say, no, you have no space in my life and I don't allow you to be here. Yeah. And step by step, it gets easier for him to realize I can just say no and mm -hmm. I can choose to give myself I need right now. Yeah. And it's totally fine to just be nice to yourself. And as we go deeper with the teaching, that helps me to stay here in this place. Sometimes I just need to watch a class when I don't know what to do. And I want to do the mirror exercise, but I don't get clear about step one and I don't do the mirror exercise when I'm not clear about step one because I don't know, then it feels not good for me. Because I always remember Shalia's words when she said, we have to do all four steps always. And that there is a purpose for all four steps always. And then I just need another support and I, I realize I need help. So I turn on a class. I just sit there being grumpy. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I just watch the class, yes. And then I kind of just go through it. Sometimes it helps me to feel the upheaval, which is a process in the healing, mm -hmm. even I don't like it sometimes. No, but it's just also a space that calls for like a lot of compassion. Like exactly. This. So you're releasing a lot of crap, basically. And exactly. It's not always the most comfortable experience. Exactly. And that's, I love the support through the teaching is... <clears throat> Gentle. Yeah. I love that you said like um, that voice is not you because that's something I've also been working through this uh, identifying with that that harsh voice and thinking that's me but. Yeah, we are all like in truth loving people. So also in, in truth loving to ourselves. It's just like realizing that and realizing that voice is yeah, not our true selves. And yeah, and that, that makes it also easier to um, yeah, to be kind to ourselves if we don't believe that yeah, in that and the identity anymore. Yeah, I feel that is, yeah, that's also really important. And yeah, sometimes it takes a long time before you realize it. Like Alexandra said, like, oh, that you have this pattern or this belief that you have to be that way. And, yeah. I feel like something that stuck with me about the sermon um, very much was about seeing the patterns of um, our parents and how we think that a behavior or yeah, a way that our parents treated us or anybody for that matter, um, when we were growing up, it can 
like it's normal even if it's not and that we um maybe have like delusions about what the truth is there so we protect ourselves and not not actually question what really happened or what the truth is there just and i i've been feeling this and i've been going around this for the whole week with my mom my mother um and i've been like well i know what the truth is but i don't know how to get to that core thing and the the whole healing i see it's about being gentle and she was not gentle with me at all <laughs> um so the 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 gem that i took out of this is that i actually have to be there and feel that which it's not something wow because <laughs> obviously we have to feel like to 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 get to the core and heal the, the core um but it was like very very hard to actually see that oh look you have to actually face reality <laughs> and when you when you like speak it out it sounds very obvious but in the inside that's where we're not like gentle and we say like oh well it's obvious like why why aren't you healing it well this is like my my thoughts about this <laughs> until now and i wasn't like recognizing that i was not leaving space for myself and like really taking the time to be with myself there and seeing that a hey, like this part is actually traumatized and you have like to give her all the space that she needs and maybe like at the at the core i will need map again like i don't know but it's like this part that really needs presence and to actually face the truth. And this is like something that God has brought up in my consciousness. And I've been healing layer by layer. And like the core is that you have to see reality as it is and like choose like, do you really want to believe that what happened like with your mom and the thought patterns that she brought up to you is like actually the truth, which means that the, the fear is true or Will you actually heal it like completely and let it go? So yeah, this is like what I've I've taken like away from my my part of like my journey with the sermon. Yeah, I feel like that that's a very uh, it's a very cool like chain of, of conversation or, or thought if uh, if you must. Uh, because like pretty much everyone grew up with this. So and it's not like a one-time generation thing, it's kind of like we've been passed on, but the most interesting thing for me is always when, when we have these after church tea times uh, and these kind of discussions is um seeing that we are given like the like an amazing opportunity to kind of like uh, put an end to that you no know? and be able to call that gentleness that perhaps our parents didn't learn and our grandparents didn't learn and um that even though they of course were mirroring things to us uh, that this doesn't become like an excuse to hold on to this kind of like a uh, little tyrant that that we have like uh to put it in, in the same words that Alexandra was putting in, uh, we don't really need to live with this anymore. Uh, and Granville was also kind of like mentioning it, uh, getting clear or um, why is like, is this normal? Or and start questioning like what your experiences uh, are because yeah, we may be taking as normal things are, are not really normal. Uh, I remember that was a little bit my process before uh, finding the teaching when I was way younger, was like, this doesn't make any sense anymore. Um, and I had kind of like the same question that, that I remember Jeff one asking in, in a class too, is um, if like, if, the, if life is this, like if it's about like suffering and, and having a harsh time, and it doesn't really make any sense. So there has to be something else. And then kind of like nitpicking, okay, well, like where, where are the patterns? Where are the things that repeat themselves and that don't seem to be working anymore? Because uh, I think it's Einstein, there's it? insanity to do the, th the same thing over and over again and expect different results. 
as I was like, yeah, I, I just want different results. I don't want this anymore. Like, um, I cannot live 80, 90, 70 years of this. It's, it's like, no, where, like, where do I get off? Um, and so, like, of course, everything kind of like lined up perfectly to find the teaching. And we are where we are. Um, but yeah, like, it's absolutely safe to do that, that kind of like inner exploration, even if it's a little bit challenging. Like, I, I agree with uh, Alexander, uh, Alexandra's experience. Like, there are places where you don't really want to be looking at, they don't feel comfortable, mm -hmm. like, kind of like protecting yourself from getting hurt. Um, but even if it's challenging and you can give yourself like the space that you need, like I, I shared the same experience as you, Nikki. Like for me, one of my biggest challenges this week was kind of like claim that freaking space to just get clear on myself, like what is going on, how am I feeling about this, and kind of like come to the other end. Uh, and like, like also kind of like make a, a, a break or a separation in between what is my experience and what what was somebody else's experience and kind of like that, where the, the boundary between these two uh, is like, where, where the fine line between these two is really at. Um, yeah, I feel like that's pretty much where I wanted to get at. Um, it's like totally safe, just explore and see, right? look into these places, take as much time as you need. And outroot whatever is is not really feeling good anymore um, like it has no purpose uh, at, at some point this is like uh like meaningless so why hold on to it mm -hmm. I feel not what I was just thinking of gentleness is not only in yeah not punishing yourself or punishing in a, I was also thinking about taking in too much at once even yeah even good things that you are not gentle with yourself you see something good and you want to take it all in it was not like uh, watching a lot of classes or anything like that because then yeah there. That's like trying to uh, move forward re much faster than you're able to. And then you go back at the beginning. And yeah, that was also what I was thinking of. And that's in some way also expecting too much of yourself, like even receiving it. It's like a process and it can be gentle there too and receiving your good stuff and processing the, yeah just what I was thinking of too something else that came in my mind was uh about receiving discipline, like the thing that Alexandra brought up uh, in the sermon. And I actually experienced it with Andy right before the sermon. <laughs> and we were like, it was perfect timing because like the answer was in the sermon. Um, and like something happened and he was disciplining me and I was like very reactive. And I didn't see it or I wasn't seeing that I was being hard, harsh on myself in that specific area about receiving discipline. Because I thought that something else was happening instead of seeing what was actually happening. Um, so yeah, like once I healed that part, I actually saw that nothing bad was happening. Like he was just communicating something. And I took it hard because I was actually hurt there. And like, because of my own harshness in that space, I like not willing to uh, be present and loving. So yeah, just wanted to share the synchronicity about that.
Yeah, I learned a lot about receiving discipline too. And it feels so good to be able to receive it and to realize when you are reactive to something because it points you to a very hurt place inside of you, but it's time that you heal it. And that takes that's a process too. And I don't need to be upset with myself because I was not able to receive it right now. It's okay. Okay. I love what you always repeat, what Shalia shared in one of the Twin Film Ascension School classes, let yourself off the hook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. She's like, I, I always like let myself off the hook. Okay, I didn't like... got it <laughs> immediately. I sometimes have this with, uh, with Deborah when she's realizing something and she's pointing me to something and I'm just not receiving it. Mm -hmm. And after some time, I'm just, okay, I got it. And then I talk to her and I see and I say, yes, that um, I can see it now. And I, I, I chose to heal it now. Or someone else in the community, in the Church of Union, some friend or with someone you are working together helps you to see something. Mm -hmm. In the first moment, you don't realize it. And then it is just... It's a process, like you can. It's a process, like um, you can like throw th something at someone, uh, but it, it, like it, it's like okay, th this is the gift, and now it's your time to unwrap it, and so but you can unwrap it as, as like whenever you want. Yep. Um, that's it. And what I loved what Liane was saying this too much. It's not gentle when you overwhelm yourself with things of course more you than you can handle yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that's not cool either yeah. i know this feeling yeah. too this is becomes really uncomfortable and then you <laughs> cannot handle what you have and then you are kind of like <laughs> i experienced that not one time in my life I think. Uh -huh. a little bit more uh -huh. but that's it i i need um to learn to be gentle here with myself because I had this fear, oh my God, I need a lot of that right now. I never have something else. And I needed to, to realize I have this habit here of I'm so afraid that when I have not a lot right now that I will never get anything anymore. And I needed to heal this part that he knows you have something good and it grows steadily. And when you have something good, then you can enjoy it and you can feel uh, complete with it and then you can have something new mm -hmm. and there I needed to be patient and there I, I needed to realize that patience has nothing to do with time because with this new thing I am enjoying it I don't know a short time and then it's complete and then I grow there patience is just accepting the moment how it is right now unconditionally mm -hmm. and then I can be in a very steadily and gentle process with myself mm -hmm. and I have to remind myself again and again and I do it again and again when I freak out and I'm being harsh with myself that I would like to go faster and I'm, I cannot be so slow and I'm still healing on this no I accept how it is right now I feel hurt right now Mm -hmm. I am in massive upheaval, <laughs> and that's fine. I look now my favorite series. We I look now even. Modern Family, and I need that right now. And I watch this one series, and then I feel better, and I can do the other task of the day. And this mm -hmm. feels good. When I do that, I, I feel I'm very gentle with myself, and I respect myself, and I give myself what I really need, and I am my best friend. I would not say my best friend, do it now. Why are you not doing it? You have to do that. I would not talk to my best friend like that. I would talk mm -hmm. with my best friend, compassionate and gentle and in a nice way. And this sermon is kind of the perfect reminder that you have to start with yourself. Like what was Grenville sharing? Oh, that your compassion is not complete if it doesn't include you. I loved it. I was this like, was... yeah, this is very like, well, <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, do you feel complete? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to add something. Um, I remember like that part where uh, they were speaking about how sometimes like we do the inner work and we don't see that we're doing the inner work for the result outside. And we don't do the inner work for ourselves and for God and for our own peace. Because like the outside, of course, it aligns with the inside. So if we are like, we're trying like to bypass and that's something that I've seen myself do and like that's actually brought me awareness to be more aware when I actually do the inner inner work like for what am I doing it for like what's what's the purpose like what's what's my my um final destination let's say like is it peace or is it like the outside thing yeah Thank you for bringing that up. I needed to learn this too, that I, I realize what is my intention. Mm. <laughs> um, and sometimes I realize, okay, that intention feels not so peaceful and also not really nice to myself, kind of. And I realized that I just need to humble myself. I let go because I kind of was here like, oh, I know better than God. <laughs> so God yeah, that that one. <laughs> I know, yes. <laughs> and it was a process too to realize that, ah, okay. Um, I think, no, I think here better. I think I know better than God here. And then I realized, no, how it is right now, it's perfect for me. Mm. And there is something still I need to learn or I need to heal before I can. It's like what Leanne was sharing at the beginning. It's uh, you have a piece uh, the, or the, the healing will kind of like help you grow into the next. Exactly. That's it. Like, uh, and we don't, I love always the, the example of, of like building a puzzle because it's true. And we recently built like a 1000 uh, piece puzzle. So it, it's like literal you have absolutely no idea where goes where. <laughs> so you got to start somewhere. Mm. And you start with the, the, like the longest hanging fruit, the, the easiest part, the, the, like the outside <laughs> frame, kind of like to, to give you a grid, a guideline of to, okay, what comes next? And the most complicated parts will probably be coming at, at, like at the end because you needed some preparation to face that. Um, yeah, it, it's it's and like wanting to run without having learned how to walk. It, it, it would be impossible. And the coolest thing was then with the puzzle, the complicated thing was then not complicated anymore because we prepared it so good. Oh, it was it was <laughs> like there were of course like little moments where like oh my god, where is that where is this piece or like this this everything was in place like this piece was already done. There was one missing piece that you couldn't find anywhere. And you were like, okay. I when I surrounded, I found it. I'll just keep going with another piece and, yes. and eventually it will appear. And it actually doesn't know exactly how it worked. Uh, it was a very cool experience to mm -hmm. kind of like to see the, the, the inner healing process uh, laid out in a very graphic way. Yo. Uh, I'm very looking forward to building the next uh, 1000 piece puzzle, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I don't see you very, very like crazy about it, but I'm like all about it. And that's fine. Okay. Just thank you for sharing this. Like, this was very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Very welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do we have comments? No, no, there are no like okay. questions or comments. Like, hi, everyone who's been joining us. Um, <laughs> yeah, when you feel complete, I feel complete too. Yeah. And I would like to thank you all for participating. I would mm -hmm. like to thank the audience being here and watching our after church tea time. And with this said, I wish you a beautiful day, a beautiful night. Beautiful evening and we see us in the next after church tea time.